Ice Locked here with Nocturne Gaming, back with more Legends of Eidolon, and today we're taking a look at a mining sampling guide. For mining, there are five main stats that we need to get the most out of our mining sampling. The first is mining efficiency, and this is the base stat that you need to be able to get any sampling or any mining done. The more efficiency they have, the more ores that you'll get per hour, and the greater your sampling rate will be. Mining speed is next up, and this is probably the most important stat that you can get. However, there's only a few sources to get it, but on the positive note, it does cap out at 62 per minute. So as long as you can get there, you don't need to worry about the other sources. The main sources of mining speed is from your mining level, as well as boost foods, which we'll talk about in just a few minutes. The third stat that we're going to be going over is mining ore drop chance or multi ore drop chance and this gives you the ability to get more ores for every swing of the pickaxe. This does cap out at 300% and it is very important to maximize this as this is one of the easiest ways to increase your sampling early game and in, into late game it's basically mandatory if you want the best samples. The fourth stat that we really need is going to be the printer sample rate. You can check this in the construction skill info window and this displays it for this current character. 90% is the cap on the stat and I highly recommend that you check out my printer sampling guide as this goes over all of the ways to get more printer sample rate. The fifth stat that we need is actually our AFK gain rate and AFK gain rate comes from many, many sources in the game and it is basically the best stat point for point. So more AFK gain rate is just going to multiply all of the benefits that you get from all of the other mining stats. The first piece of this puzzle for mining sampling is going to be equipping the proper gear that you use while you're mining. There are two gear sets that we're going to use to get the most out of mining. The first is the efficiency gear set that we're going to equip everything we can that increases our total mining efficiency. The second gear set is going to be getting the most out of snapshotting the amount of health that we have due to the hardy diggy alchemy bubble. So the first set is going to be using three pieces of the magma or dread low gear as it's called sometimes and this is because we get more mining efficiency from the strength and the all stats that it gives on these three pieces of gear if you cannot equip dread low gear or you just haven't gotten to that stage of the game and you're sampling you can use the other pieces such as the viking cap and the dirty coal miner baggy soot pants that give you mining efficiency however we can test this real quick and see that you actually drop on your mining efficiency by using that 5% mining efficiency compared to the base amount that you get from just having this uh, the amount of strength that you get from the gear. One oddity to note is that you can use the funny hat which gives skill efficiency and I've noticed that I gain more efficiency using the funny hat than I do with the viking cap. This is a small amount later in the game and especially once you get to the magma gear set you really won't notice the difference but you can see that I, I can get quite a bit more out of it for some odd reason even though the numbers are lower but I did want to mention that for you. The next piece of gear is going to be our pendant. The pendant is the divine scarf. This is best in slot right now for multiple reasons. First is that it gives a large amount of base strength, which is multiplied by our talents and other sources, which gives us quite a bit more strength than what you get from Persephone's bouquet. The second thing is the 25% all AFK gain rate make this pendant the best in slot for pretty much everything in the game at this stage. So if you cannot make the Divine Scar for various reasons, or you just haven't gotten to that stage of the game, Persephone's Bouquet is the second best in slot. But moving back to our gear, our next piece of gear is going to be our serrated Rex rings that give us 8% skill efficiency for each ring. One thing to mention here is it is recommended to have three different sets of these rings that have the strength, agility, and wisdom. So for the mining character, we want to use the strength version of the serrated Rex rings. 
Moving on to our specials tab, there are a few important pieces here. The Snoozy Cat gives us 10% all AFK gain rates. The Idle Skiller Trophy is best in slot. However, we do need to also keep in mind that the King of Foods is going to be necessary later. We'll go over that in a minute. And if you don't have the Idle Skiller Trophy, uh, then you can use the Blunder Hills Trophy, which gives you 3% all skill AFK gain rate. Moving on to our wings, we have the Giant Star Flower. This is best in slot with 13% all AFK gain rate. If you don't have these, the Angel Wings that give you the 11% AFK gain rate or the other flower for 9% are also acceptable alternatives. For your keychains, we need AFK gain rate as our primary stat here. This is going to give us the most bang for our buck. And we want two of these pendants that give us the most AFK gain rate that we can get in total. Keep in mind that for reasons of the chips in the laboratory later, the highest EFK gain rate keychain that you have needs to be in the top slot to get the most out of it. Moving on to our tools, the most important thing is having the best pickaxe that you can get for multiple reasons. First is it increases the speed of the pickaxe, which increases your mining speed. Mining power is one of the best ways to increase your overall um, skilling efficiency, and then it gives you a large amount of strength. Keep in mind that with the amount of strength that you're getting on your different gear pieces and pieces that are equipped to you, it's roughly nine times the amount of strength that is shown that actually gets applied to your character. So with 65 strength here, it's a little or almost 600 strength that I'm getting from um, this pickaxe alone. So with that said, all of your other tools should have versions of the tools that give you the most strength that you can get on it. So all of these five or six other tools all have strength on it, and that gives us the most stats that we can get. The last section of the equipment tab is your food, and we need two sets of food to get the most out of this. So our efficiency setup is going to be using primarily golden grilled cheese nomwiches to give you more strength the golden peanut for more mining efficiency, and then the three boost foods that you need to get to the 62 mining speed. Now keep in mind that if you have enough mining speed based on your mining level, you may not need all of these boost foods to hit the actual cap. So uh, one other thing to mention on the food is make sure you're using a small amount of these and make sure you unequip them when you're done sampling as you don't want these to get accidentally used up and you'll be unable to replenish these until an event comes around. Moving on to our secondary set of gear, this is going to be maximizing the amount of HP that we have on our character for a snapshot. We'll talk about the snapshots near the end of the guide when we get started with the actual sampling, but for the pieces of gear. The main thing is you need to have the proper keychains. Again, using the best keychain that gives you the most strength, these are both 4%, so it doesn't matter, on the top slot to double it with the chip in the laboratory. Using the giant violet for percent to all stats. The king of food trophy, which multiplies all of your health potions and everything else with the food effect. And then the opal rings to give you that percentage, that strength and percent to all stats on the rings. And then switch over your boots to the dreadloo boots and your helmet to the royal turban, which is going to multiply your golden food effects. The golden food effects that we're going to be using are the golden jam to multiply your maximum HP and the golden grilled cheese nomwiches. So you actually get a decent boost to your overall efficiency using that setup. We're going to go ahead and switch that back so I don't forget it later. And then lastly is going to be switching over these top four pieces of food to the potions. And you'll see that we pushed our health up to about 7.5 million so far. There's a few more things that we'll look at later to increase your health even more, but that's for later in the guide. Next up is our talents, and we're going to go over these as quick as we can. There are four main talents that we need on this tab to get the most out of our efficiency. First up is Brute Efficiency to increase your total efficiency. Second is Fist of Rage to increase your maximum strength, which increases your maximum HP and your mining efficiency. And then Health Booster to increase your maximum HP. This will make more sense in a few minutes when we get to Alchemy. And lastly on this tab is Idle Skilling to increase your overall AFK gain rates. 
On the second tab, we have quite a few that are really important, starting with Big Pick. This is an active skill, so it does need to be assigned to your attack bar, but it does increase the amount of ore that you'll get while mining. Next up is Copper Collector, and this gives you more mining efficiency based on how much ore is stored in the chest. So the more ore that you have, the more efficiency that you have. It is important that you try to cap this out as soon as you can, as this 16% really does multiply to a very large amount. And in World 3, we'll show you how to increase this even more. Motherload Miner is another thing that gives you more base multi ore drop chance. Again, this is there is a cap on this at 300%, so you may not need this talent, but until you get to 300%, it's important to max this out. Lastly, tool proficiency is huge as it does multiply the amount of mining power that your pickaxes give for every power of 10 mining levels that you have. So if you can push your mining level to 100, you'll notice another big spike in your overall mining level. After this, we have more of the base stat stuff. So the main things we want is the stress tested garb for more equipment uh, strength. So all of your strength gets multiplied by higher amounts. And then after that, we have Absolute Unit and Firmly Grasp It. Both of these give you one strength per talent point that you put into it. But at minimum, you want one point into Firmly Grasp It as it does give you 15 base strength for one point. And then, so both of these are of equal value. After that, Strength in Numbers gives you more HP from your strength. So this is very important to have and you want to max this talent out. And last, well, there's two more talents, but health overdrive multiplies your maximum HP by a percentage. So the higher level you get, the more maximum HP you have. And then if you have enough points left over, it's not super important, but it does help out golden food from hungry for gold gets a 40% increase or more depending on your talent level. Moving on to tab three, we have a few in here that also help us out. The main things is going to be strength some more to increase your talent level in Fist of Rage. After that, Shieldia Statue, which gives you more mining power from your statues and Fistful of Obols to give you more strength from your obols. Everything else is bonus on this tab unless you don't have enough printer sampling rate and then super samples can give you that other six to seven percent from your based on your talent levels. Moving on to tab four, we have two talents that are primarily very important, and that is the uh, overblown testosterone, which gives you a percentage of your strength, as well as more talent levels and Fist of Rage. The second skill is skill strengthen, which gives you more skill efficiency from your strength and another small amount of base strength. Everything else on this tab, again, becomes very optional. However, things like symbols of beyond to give you more talent levels on every talent that you have at least one point in is helpful. And then the family guide to increase your family bonuses. Taking a look at that in the families tab, you can get things like more total strength and moving on down weapon power and a total Total HP is very useful, weapon power not so much, and then everything else is kind of optional. But there are a lot of different family bonuses, so getting that bonus from the family guy is helpful. And then last thing to mention is the King of the Remember. This is important to have at basically all times as this can give you a lot more printer output based on the power of 10 kills that you have on your Orb of Remembrance. So make sure you have that equipped. Moving on to your star talent tabs, there are a few that are pretty useful here. First up is Will of the Eldest to give you more stats, TikTok to give you more AFK gain rates, toilet paper postage stamp, which multiplies the efficiency on your stamps. However, one thing to mention is that after 1.5 higher bonus on this, instead of 1.6, 1.5, it starts scaling very badly. So talent points in this become a lot less helpful. Moving on to tab two, there are three that are really important here. Frothy Malk to give you more bonuses from your food and potions. This really helps push our HP up. And then our super source to give you more base efficiency and action frenzy for more skilling speed. One other honorable mention, or not really honorable mention, it's very necessary, but if you're sampling, you should know it. Printer sampling does increase up to 18% if you have 100 points in this. But again, check out the printer sampling guide for more details.
And then lastly, in this tab, you have two talents that help out. First is the Uber Charged Health to give you more base HP, and then Stat Overload, which gives you 300 base strength. It does not get multiplied by anything, so it's not a high priority, but it is 300 more strength. Next up, we have the star signs, and there are three star signs that we should be using primarily. The first is the Dwarfo Beardus, which gives you 5% mining efficiency and 20% multi ore chance. After that is Mount Eaterist, that gives you 15% all food effect. Both of these are very large bonuses. They seem small, but it adds up very quickly. But if you feel like you don't want to use the food effect, you could use the Big Comatose to give you 2% skill AFK gain rate. However, I do notice better gains from the, the other two that I have selected. For your third star sign, you want to use Comatose Major to give you 4% skill AFK gain rate. So walking through the world and starting with world one for the bonuses that we can get, we have statues up first. Statues have a few things that help us out. First is the mining statue that gives us more mining power. Mining power directly translates into efficiency, so very worth it. The feasty effect is huge for us because it does multiply all of our uh, potions and it multiplies our food bonuses. So we're getting a lot more HP and mining efficiency from golden peanuts and such. And the last thing is the health statue. It is a small amount, but statues do add up. So that's more base health for us. It is worth mentioning, make sure you do have your golden statues unlocked as this makes all of your characters across your account get the most out of your statues. And also in World 1 is our stamps, and in the combat tab we have two things that we're really looking for here. First is any stamps that give us base HP, heart stamp, vitality stamp, and further down we have the black heart stamp. And then we also want the stamps that give us more strength, the fist stamp, the violence stamp, and lastly the maxo slapo stamp. There is one other one worth mentioning, which is the stat graph stamp. It's very expensive and it's very hard to level up, but it does give you more base stats. In the skills tab, we have a few that, are, that will help out your mining efficiency. First up is the pickaxe stamp, which gives you more base mining efficiency. Keep in mind that you may get this notification here for under leveled. This will still continue to scale just at a much slower rate than the stamp actually shows. This is based on your mining level and getting it to any high level amounts is basically going to cause this to pop up, but a little bit of efficiency is still a little bit more efficiency. After that, you have the Twin Ore Stamp to increase your multi ore chance. And then you also have the Cool Diggy Tool Stamp, which gives you a lot more base mining efficiency. Again, this does scale with the underleveled thing, but it scales a little bit better. And the last one on this page to mention is the multi-tool stamp, and this gives you base uh, all skill efficiency. It is expensive to level up, but it is a lot higher amount to your all skill efficiency. For our companions, we do have a few that help us out directly and a few that are a little more quality of life. The first up is Sandy Pot. This gives us 15 base all stats and this gives us more strength. Board Bean gives us 5% EFK gain rates to skills in particular and Multi gives us 5% all skill efficiency. Sheepy does give us a quality of life feature that gives us all big bubbles or count as equipped at all times, which means a little less micromanaging. And that's something that I generally forgot to equip while I was sampling. After that, we also have Rift Slug. This is a direct increase to your talents. It's just 25 free talent levels, which means more efficiency, more strength, more um, mining efficiency from the copper ore. Just in general, everything is a little bit better. And lastly, King Doot is more of a quality of life feature. It is possible to sample at the highest rate without King Doot. However, you do gain a little bit more um, from it, you gain about three, three and a half percent more AFK gain rates by having King Doot. Um, but you can cycle your timers properly to get the most out of your sampling. And when you get to the end game, you're not sampling as frequently. So King Doot becomes less useful to get the maximum amount. Moving on to world two and starting with the alchemy bubbles. There are quite a few bubbles that help us out with mining. 
Uh, some more than others, but starting with the bottom, we have Roid Ragin. This gives us one strength for every one level we have in to this bubble. However, because of the multipliers that are available in Alchemy, this is more like five strength for every level that you have in this bubble. So it does add up quite quickly. So make sure you're leveling this as frequently as possible. Next up is Warrior's Rule. This is one of the multipliers and it gives you a 2.5 times multiplier to all of your orange bubbles as long as you're on a warrior based class. So being a Divine Knight, we are getting this multiplier. Next up is Hardy Diggy. This is why maximum HP is so important. Maximum H, we get more mining efficiency per power of 10 max HP. So 10, 100, 1000 HP, we get more mining efficiency. This stacks up very quickly and it scales point for point. So every one HP you have does affect your mining efficiency just at lower rates, the more HP that you get. So at 10 HP, you're getting 45%. At 15 HP, you're getting, um, what is that? 77% or 67% mining efficiency. So it does add up and it does scale decently well. So every HP you can get does help. Next up, we do have the Wyoming Blood. This is where we get our multiplier to multi or chance. This increases your maximum multi ore chance from 100% to 300%. It is necessary, it is basically mandatory to have this equipped and get this to level 184, 185 to get 300% from this. If you have multi ore source from other things like your star signs and your stamps, you don't need this to level 185, just as long as the total amount on your stat sheet shows 300%, then you'll be able to get the maximum that you can from multi ore chance. Next up, we do have something that I should mention, really smart. This is mostly helpful for fishing, but if for some reason your fishing is higher than your mining, you can get more EXP here. Not gonna help your sampling, except for helping you level up to get more speed. Moving on, we have the uh, strong tools, which gives us more skilling power from our pickaxes. So this multiplies the amount of power that you get on your pickaxe, which is gonna give you a lot more skilling efficiency. So make sure you're leveling this up when you can. It is quite expensive early on as platinum ore is not easy to get too early. Continuing on down the line, we go to bubble number 17. We're looking for Molt Orange, and this multiplies your first and third bubbles primarily, and this gives you a little bit more strength and a little bit more mining efficiency. So it is worth leveling up. Um, it can be expensive depending on where you're at and how much damage you have though. We have two more bubbles in the orange section that do help us out quite a bit. The first is Slabby Orefish. This gives you mining power per power or per 100 items in the slab. Now, when you level this up, it's about two mining power per 100 items. There's 1400 items in the game, so it's like 28 more mining power. This doesn't get multiplied by anything, so it's kind of a low amount and it's not worth investing a ton of your resources into this too early. The other one is the Slabby Strengthen, which gives you strength per power of t uh, per 100 items on the slab. Again, 1400 items, so you're getting 14 times whatever your base strength is here. Not super important, but it is a little bit more gains for you. We do have a few more bubbles and those are in the yellow section and these are more um, secondary benefits, but they do add up. The first is the prowessary bubble. This is the prowess bonus. This lowers the amount of efficiency that you need to get to the next tier of multi ore. However, this caps at two times flat. So from leaks in the data menu, from the post office box and from alchemy, all of these bonuses add together. And once it gets to two, you'll no longer see another benefit fit so just get to two and then you don't need to level this up anymore next up is the stamp tramp this levels up the maximum level of your toilet paper postage stamp so you can get a little bit more out of your stamps I, again there's only a there's a point that this no longer becomes useful but it is worth mentioning and then we also have the sample it bubble that increases your overall sample size 
past this, there's one more bubble and this is mandatory as well. This is the big P. This gives you a multiplier to your minor link bonuses on your divinities that are equipped. This should be equipped to every character, uh, especially the ones that have the goat god equipped. And I'll show you why once we get to world five. For the vials, we have three that are relatively useful for what we're doing today. The first is the void vial. This is a mandatory vial. This gives you more mining efficiency. Now, one thing to mention is that every vial becomes necessary because of the rift bonus. So every vial that you have at level 13 will give you a bonus. We'll go over that in more detail in just a few minutes, but void vial to start out, more mining efficiency. After that is the snow slurry. This gives you more printer sample size. And then the last thing to mention is the pearl. Pearl Seltzer gives you more percent to all stats. It is quite expensive to level up, but it is worth it for that more that a bonus that you're getting from it. Also in World 2 is the post office, and we have a few that are very useful for us, starting with the mining box, and this gives you more mining efficiency, prowess effect, and mining AFK gain rates. From here, we want to put points into the food box to give you more boost food, more health food effect. These are both very important for what we're doing. And then the health box also gives you more max HP and more base max HP. Moving on, we also have more points that we can put into in the second tab, such as the utility crate to get more printer sample size, and also into the uh, gaming crate for more strength, and as well as the myriad crate that gives you more all base stats and all efficiency. This does require a ridiculous amount of post office boxes, so it may not be worth it to do too early on. And finishing up World 2 with obols, we have a few choices to make here. The first thing is, as I always use the circle obols on the character itself. This gives me more mining power and a little bit more strength. The square obols as well as the hexagon obols should be mining as well. There is one exception. If you have the dilapidated slush obols, which I'll show you in the family tab, they do give more efficiency than the mining hexagon obols. And then for your sparkle oval, you want to use either the new molten oval that gives you 5% AFK gain rates or using the mining sparkle that gives you mining efficiency. For your family tab, it's mostly important that you have the squares, hexagons, and sparkles done. It's the same ovals, but the dilapidated slush does give you 4% versus the 2%. So if you can get enough of these, they are worth using. And then again, making the choice between the mining ovals or the new AFK gain rates. Personally, I've noticed better gains with the AFK gain rate ovals than the efficiency. Taking a look at the totals though, just to wrap it up, you do have quite a bit of mining efficiency, more base skill efficiency, more strength, and quite a bit of all AFK gain rates from your ovals. Moving on to world three and starting with the prayers, we have the Royal Sampler, which increases your 3D printer sample size. Keep in mind not to over level this as there are multiple sources of 3D printer sample size, and it does reduce your all EXP gain. Your two most important that you can equip are Zerg Rush again to give you more AFK gain rate and Skill Dimwit for more skill efficiency. The two that you want to avoid are the Balance of Proficiency, which reduces your efficiency, and Rucksack, which reduces your AFK gain rate. Also worth mentioning in World 3 is the Atom Collider bonus, the Helium Atom. This gives you a bonus to any talent that requires power of 10 of resources, specifically for the Copper Collector. This gives you more tiers of that Copper Collector for basically spending atoms, and it's always applied. This is a huge bonus to your efficiency, so I recommend that you level this up as much as you can as soon as you can. Moving on to World 4 and looking at the lab first, we have a few here that are very useful and everything else does add up, but the primary four are starting with Sapphire Navette, which gives us 4.5% to all stat, which gives us more strength. After that, we're looking at Certified Book Stamp to double all of the bonuses from our stamps, and then my first chemistry set, which doubles all of the bonuses from Alchemy Vials. Make sure you have Black Diamond Rhinestone also equipped as this gives you 24% bonus to all of your dinner menu items, which we'll look at in just a few seconds. But 
all of those bonuses are very useful and are basically mandatory and everything else is relatively smaller bonuses that you can get so moving on to the console we have our setup here on our third character the setup we want to use is using the two card doublers which is the top left card and the bottom right card are doubled and then the 15 percent skill afk gain rate chip that gives us quite a bit more gains and then we want to use the four orange chips as well these four orange chips double your star signs your trophy your keychain, your upper keychain slot. So make sure your best keychain is in the upper slot and then the pendant as well. So all of those bonuses really add up and but it also depends on the gear and equipment that you're using. So keep that in mind. Next up is the dinner menu and there are basically four meals that we're looking at to give us the most benefit out of our dinner menu. The corn, which gives us 2% skill efficiency per level and the rice ball, which gives us 3% skill efficiency per level. The leak, which increases our skilling prowess effect. Again, this caps out at two times, so you may not need as high of a level in this. And then lastly is the whipped cocoa, which gives you 4% skill efficiency per level. All of these bonuses are multiplied by the lab bonus to give you 24% more, so that all of that skill efficiency really does add up quite quickly. Also in World 4 is the shiny pet passives. There are a few here that really help us out, such as the bonuses to all meals. There are several pets that give that. The base efficiency for all skills, again, several pets. And then the other main thing is getting any of them that give the base stats. And this gives us like 10, 10 base stat. It's 2% per level of the shiny pet. But all of these will really add up to give you quite a bit more stats as you unlock the pets to different levels. And for our last bonuses in World 4, we have the Rift. The Rift has bonuses to all aspects of the game, but the main ones that we're going to be looking at is the starting with Skill Mastery. Skill Mastery is a way to get bonuses based on your character's total level from all 10 characters into any, into any particular skill. So every skill has its individual bonuses. We're taking a look at mining first. And the main bonuses that we get is every skill gives you 5% to all skill efficiency as long as you're above level 500 total on this. If you can get to 750 total, then you're getting 1% printer output for every skill. And the main thing that we're looking for here is that we're getting all mining cards are now passive. This really changes which cards we use, and but basically any card that says mining in it, it becomes passive. So you get all of the efficiency, all of the skill speed, all of the skill EXP, all of it's always applied. So you really don't need to have a particular card set, but there are still ways we can optimize it. And and that's why we'll take a look at it here in a little bit. This also gives us other bonuses such as base mining efficiency and base skill EXP, but the main things are the efficiency and the cards are now passive. Every one of these skills give, this, give basically the same bonuses, so every skill that you can get above level 500 will give you that extra 5% efficiency and 1% output. So it's 75% more efficiency and 15% more printer output if you have every skill skill above level 750. There are a few other bonuses that are very useful in this. And the first is gonna be the Vile Mastery. This gives us a bonus of 2% uh, a multiplier, 2% multiplier to all of your vials for every vial that's at level 13. So 38 vials is giving us 76% bonus to all of our vials. Um, it is possible to double all of your vials again. So it definitely adds up. The next thing would be the ruby cards. This is a more this is more of a grind, but this is direct increases. This gives us the ability to unlock another tier of our card sets for that easy resource set. It also gives us more levels to our cards. And especially if you have the mastery that's giving those cards to be passive, it can really increase your overall mining gains if you can unlock ruby cards. The other ones are not as important, but they do add up. Things like infinite star sign that makes all of your star signs active at all times. This requires you to level up shiny pets, but it gives you all of those bonuses. We can still double the bonuses from particular star signs, but it's only the ones that we have selected uh, or active that are doubled. So uh, make sure you're selecting the right star sign still. 
And moving on to World 5, starting with our relics, we have a few relics to help us out quite a bit, and some not so much, but starting with the Frost Relic, this gives us 30% efficiency per tier, so this is 90% efficiency at the Eldric level for all skills in World 1, 2, and 3. This means it's really helping us out on our mining sampling today. After that, we have Chilled Yarn, which multiplies our bonuses from the sigils and alchemy, and this is tripled at Eldrick, so that's six times more bonus from our sigils. Taking a look at those really quick, the Emoji Veggie to increase our golden foods, our Big Muscle for more strength, and lastly, our Dream Catcher for more skill AFK gain rate. This is 3% at the golden level, and with the multiplier, that's 18% more skill AFK gains. But back to our relics here, we also have Fury Relic to give you more max talent book levels. And we also have Socrates to give you 10% all stats per tier. So 30% all stats, which is 30% more strength for us. And the last one that I feel like I should mention is the Golden Relic or Gold Relic that multiplies our printer output for every day that we don't resample. This means that we want to be selective of when we want when we want to sample as we do get a multiplier in our printer. It doesn't show on the stats itself, but every day that we don't sample gives us more sampling for all of our characters. So or more printer output. So using this bonus wisely is one of the big challenges. And last up in World 5 is going to be our bonuses from Divinity Statues. There is a major way to set this up to get the most out of one to two characters at a time. However, you have to be selective doing it that way. And this is why Dute is a huge quality of life feature. So you can sample all of your characters at the same time. And we'll, there's one other benefit with the combination that we'll talk about later. but. The main setup is using Snake God on one to two characters, which gives you the 30% to all AFK gain rates. And then your other eight to nine characters will be using the Goat God to give you the three and a half to 4% or 3% to your AFK gain rates to all characters. So if you look at your unlink, you can see it should look something like this with one character on the Snake God. You could do two characters and then the other eight to nine characters on the goat. This is going to give you 30% from the snake and then every other character giving you about 30 to 33% more AFK gains. This is why having the big P in your alchemy bubbles, this equipped on every character is so important. Getting that extra 30% from the goat god gives you a lot more AFK gain rates on all your characters. One other big thing to mention since we're talking about divinity statues is using the bonuses from the Harip to get the most out of your 3D printer. Harip multiplies your resources from the 3D printer by three times. However, this also, also multiplies with the lab bonus. So you get six times more printing if you have Harip equipped and then that character thrown into the lab. Uh, that is a huge amount of resources that you're printing at any given time by having six times the bonus. Now, if you have Dute active, that means all of your characters have Arctis, so you are getting the two times from Arctis and the three times from Harip, so six times from all of your characters at all times, which is basically why Dute is one of the more overpowered things in the game right now. So the last piece of the puzzle is using the proper card setups depending on where you're at in the game, depending on what bonuses you have unlocked. So I'm gonna go over the three different sets and kind of explain them. The first is using the card setup like this if you have the Rift bonuses unlocked and all of your mining cards are passive. This is gonna be your most effective use for more sampling. And this is using the 60% skill efficiency from Chaotic Troll, and then using the boost food effect from Choco Box having Blighted Cheezor, Stilted Seeker, and Tremor Worm for percent to all stats, and then the Octodar for more strength. Then the other two cards are going to be your Bunny card and your Amaret card for more skill AFK gain rate. Now, the most important thing on any, three, on any of these three card sets is going to be using the top left card and the bottom right card in the same spot, as this is going to allow your card doubler to give you the most gains. Now, 
The second piece of this is going to be, if you don't have the passive cards unlocked, you can use a setup like this, which is using more of the cards that give you the efficiency and mining speed. And this is the setup that you want to use. And this will give you the most efficiency out of your character until you get the passive cards unlocked. Now, the setup that I'm going to be using since I have the passive cards unlocked is using this for your skill efficiency. And then I'm also going to be using a snapshot for more HP. The HP card setup is going to be using the Love, Love You Light here to give you more base HP, as well as the Mammoth to give you more base HP as well. The other cards are going to be giving you the boost food effect to help your potions and then your percent to all stats, your, your Blighted Cheezor, Tremor worm and stilted seeker as well as the octodar and then the goblin the goblin also gives you more percent to hp so this is going to give you a huge boost to your total hp which is going to make that snapshot much more effective all right so we have all of the pieces together to get the most efficiency and i'm going to show you how to snapshot now so with this setup, with all of my uh, efficiency gear on right now, I currently have 3 trillion, uh, 3.8 trillion or so efficiency. My speed is maxed, my multi ore is maxed, all of that. But to get a little bit more out of this, we can hit our ore and we can see that we have about 543 million. Oh, I don't have this equipped. Okay, a little bit more strength so we can go up and we have 545 million more ore, which is about 3,917 times more multiplier from our uh, multi ore trance. Now to snapshot, we want to go back to the world one town and we want to equip all of these pieces that give us the AFK gain rates that are they, they give us the more HP. So to do this, we want to equip our proper trinkets. We want to equip the rings, the king of foods, giant violet, our royal turban and our boots. And then we also want to switch over all of our foods over. The last section of this is going to be opening up our cards and switching over to our our food, our HP cards and our card set to the yum yum desert food effect. This is going to give us the most HP that we can get at any one given time. One other thing to mention is to make sure you do have the Isakin shrine put down somewhere. This is currently in the world five town for me, so I don't need to worry about it. But if you don't have the bonuses from uh, the from it being effective in all maps and all worlds, then make sure it's in the mining map that you want it to be in, uh, because it is going to help give you the most HP. So once you have all of your pieces equipped and you have all of your HPs, we've got 13.7 million HP. We can head back into the mining map. At this point, if you look at your stats, I've got like 620 billion, which is nothing. So we want to switch back over to our actual efficiency equipment. To do this, the first thing is to open up your alchemy tab. This snapshots your current HP, and then you want to go into your, your uh, card sets, switch over your card set and your it's back to easy resources so we got our efficiency and efficiency and then start equipping all of your afk gain rate and um, skill efficiency equipment so equip your rings your your keychains wings trophy helmet boots and lastly your food make sure you get your skilling speed and efficiency all the way back up and you'll notice we pushed this over 4 trillion now. So about 400, 450 million gain in our efficiency, which is really going to push our uh, ores per hour up another 10, 11 million or so. And then we can make sure we have all of the other things like our food and our big pick. And this is going to give us a very large sample of about 500 million now. And all in all, another 10 million ores for doing your snapshot isn't a bad deal. So to continue our sampling and to get the rest of our sampling done, we need to do that one more time, which is kind of tedious, but we need to switch back everything over, hit our rings on, put our trophies, wings, helmet, boots, and our potions back on. And lastly, switch over your cards. So we've got back to our HP, no 3.2, I'm missing something here. Uh, what am I missing? Oh, boots, okay. There we go, 13.7 million HP, and then we can head on to the next, next map. Keep in mind that you only have to do this once per map, so it's not as tedious for mining as it is for chopping, but 
when you do this, you go ahead and make sure you open up the alchemy first to snapshot and then switch everything back over and continue your sampling. We'll go ahead and do our gold and iron. Check your efficiency, make sure you're at about the same number and then go ahead and start your sampling, hit your big pick and sample. It gives you your gold ore and let's head down to our iron again make sure you wait for your little number to your big pick to be ready i don't know that this really affects it but i do do it anyway maybe out of habit uh, so we got our gold and irons done and we'll basically continue the process to finish our sampling on our mining character and we can check our overall sampling we went from 240 million copper ore to a little over 500 which is a decent gain for us. And now we're just waiting on our multiplier from the gold relic to go back up. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button and drop a comment if you're enjoying our content. And a huge shout out to our patrons. Your support means the world to us. If you would like to become a patron, check out the link in the description for more details. And be sure to visit our merch store so you can get some pretty cool stuff. If you have any thoughts or questions, let us know in the comments below and we'll see you next time.